Um, hello, so today we are going to do this problem, which is part of Lead Code Daily Challenge. So the problem is shortest path with alternating um, colors. So we have integer n, and we have um, nodes in a graph from 0 to n minus 1. And each edge can be either red or blue. Um, and we have two lists, one for the red edges and one for the blue edges. And what we want to return is an answer list where the answer at, at a position x is just the length of the shortest path from node 0 to the, that node x, right? Such that the edge colors alternate, so alternate between red and blue. And if there is no such a path, we want to return minus 1, okay? So that's sort of the idea. Um, so for example, here with n equal to 3, it means we have 0, 1, and 2 as nodes. And so here we have um, a node from 0 to 1 and from 1 to 2. No blue edges. So the from 0 to 1, we have one edge. So that's, a va that's valid. So we put here the, uh, the length, which is 1. From 0 to 0, the length is 0, right? We don't move, so we put 0. But from 0 to 2, there is no alternating color path because one, 0 to 1 is red and 1 to 2 is red. So there is no path, valid path, uh, with this condition of alternate colors. So we return minus 1. So that's sort of the... But, but here, for example, uh, from 0 to 1, it's red. From 2 to 1, it's a blue, right? Um, yeah, and this is basically the answer array here. Um, okay, so how do we how do we tackle this? So we can see here n is up to one hundred. Um, so a BFS, for example, which for shortest path BFS should work. Um, and here, since n is one hundred, BFS should should pass without a problem. Um, and the number of edges is also 400. So 100 plus 400, 500 should be should pass easily. So yeah, let's uh, let's try to do it with BFS. Um, okay, so how do we solve it? We said we can use BFS from a node to um, to all or to all the other nodes, right? But we maintain uh, alternating colors. So let's just take a look at some examples. So for for example here for this one, well. For zero, well, zero, the only way is from zero to zero, so that's a zero step. For one, well, we have only one edge, and one edge doesn't ha it doesn't have to be alternating, it's just one edge, so it's one. For two here, uh, we c w there is no way from zero to two anyway, so we return minus one. Now, if we look at this example from zero uh, to zero, that's zero. From zero to one, we have one node, so one. From 0 to 2, we have also one node, so 1. This one is interesting, though. So for 0 to 0, that's 0. 0 to 1, that's just one node, so 1. 0 to 2, we have an alternating path here with the colors. So with this, this will be able to inform us a little bit, actually. So we, w we know we just need to do BFS from 0. And as we c encounter a node, the first time we encounter it, that's the shortest path, right? And so we can just keep initially our result here uh, with just minus one right and so for zero first we just set it to zero and then the second time for one we just need to increment the step before by one and that's what we add and then for this one we won't be able to reach it so anytime that a res for a node is equal to minus one the first time it's equal to minus one we want to update it but after that, we don't want to update it because the shortest path is the first one we update it with, right? So that's the, the idea here. Um, the other thing is that, okay, so we said we want BFS from zero to all the nodes, and we, we want to set the length that we, at the level we are at, to res. So basically, um, let's say we are doing BFS, we extract from our queue, we will get a node and we, we get the length when we extract from the queue for uh, for BFS. Then what we want to do is basically check if the result of the node is equal to minus 1. We just want to set it. And this is because this length here, this is the definition of BFS that it gets us the shortest path. This length here is guaranteed to be the shortest path from 0 to this node. right? Because this is the first time we set it. Um, 
Now for our BFS, our Q will need to have the node, the length of course, the node because we, we need to, the length because we want to assign it here, and the previous color, this one is unique because we want to maintain the alternate colors. So you can see for example here, because this is blue, we are author authorized to to uh, to go to go down this path but if it was zero like this one two and let's say this was red and this was red then we are not allowed to go here but how do we know we need to store that the previous one was a red and so that's why we need to have red here we need to have the previous color here now the other thing is for each node when we, we need to know the neighbor so for example when we are at one we need to know that its neighbor is two so how do we do that? Well, we can just create a graph uh, collection map, right? And have it have each node have as neighbors both the neighbor and the edge color. Again, we need to know the edge color to to know if we need if we can traverse it. So, for example, for this edge, for two here, as a neighbor of one, we need to know that the edge to two has a color blue. And that will help us know whether we can proceed if the previous color is red, right? So for the graph here, we need to have the previous, the edge color. Um, okay, so we know what our queue will contain. We know what our graph will need to be like uh, for our BFS. The other thing to pay attention to is that for the our visited set, you know, for a BFS, when you are doing a BFS, you want to maintain a visited set for all the nodes that, that you visited. In our case here, it's a little bit different because if we take a look at this example, right? So you can see here for for our result array, what we'll have is for zero, of course, is zero. For one, there is just one path. For two, um, for two, you can go here and then that's it. One, this is the shortest path. So for two, it's one. For three, you can't. You can't go here and then here because it's not alternating color, but you can go to two and then go to one and then go to three. So it's one, two, three. So it's three, right? That's the shortest path. You can't, uh, we can't do this path, right? The only path we can do is this one. And so you can see here, one thing here that you can notice is, well, we visited this cell one, we visited this node one, we visited two times, we visited it once with this red edge and another one with this blue edge. So one was visited twice. If we just use a, a visited set, this graph will not be able to find an answer for three. It will instead return minus one here. If we use just a visited set with just the node. If our visited set just contains zero, one, two, right? then. We will check when we are here visiting from two. We'll check, we'll say one is already visited, so let's not visit again. And then that will make us for three return minus one. Right? But but how do we how do we make sure we visit it? The the cross of the thing is that we can visit the same node from different colors. But you can't visit the same node multiple times from same, the same color because then you would just get the same result, right? But you can visit, visit it from different colors. And so that's what we need to allow. And to allow that, we just need to make our visited set take both the node and the color that got to that node. Okay? So in our case here, what our visited set will have when we visit one from zero the first time, it will have one and the color red. Right? And so when we are at two and visiting one, we'll check is one blue in the in the visited set. It's not, and then we'll be able to visit one, and then we'll be able to visit three. So this is how we are going to 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 do that. Okay, so visited set is going to be the node and the color. Um, and now we have all the things we need for our BFS. We can just implement normal BFS. But before, before doing BFS, we will create our graph and then we can use this visited set and build our BFS solution. Um, yeah, and that's pretty much it. And for the shortest path, when we extract from the node from the queue for BFS, if it's not has been set yet, this means this length is the shortest path and we'll assign to it. We'll assign it to the result for that node. Um, yeah, so I think that's pretty much it. Let's implement it and make sure it passes.
Um, okay, so let's implement our solution. So first we need uh, just something to represent the, the graph, right? Um, so we'll just use a collection map here. We use a default list so that if the element is the first time, it defaults to an empty list that we can add to. And now we just go through the edges for first the, um, the red edges, right? So we go through the red edges first. And then after that, we need to go through the blue edges. And then what we want to do is just say that the graph for this node is going to be to V, but we need to store also the color of the edge, right? And so the color in this case is red. So let's just represent red with R and blue with B. Um, and so here, similar thing, except here it should be B. Okay, so now we can have our Q for BFS. And so this is going to be a DQ. And what we said is that uh, we the node needs to, the, what we add to the Q needs to be the node, the length of the shortest path, of course, uh, or the length of the path and the color, right? But for zero, initially the color is nothing. There is no edge to zero. And so for zero, initially we'll just put none, but for the node it's a zero and the steps initially it's a zero. And we need our visited set. And again, for the visited set, we said we are going to add there the node and the color, okay? And now we'll just add our answer, the array or our result array that we are going to return at the end. So this is a range of N and this is what we are going to return at the end. And we are going to now start doing our BFS. So while Q will pop from the Q, that's what BFS does. And this will give us the node the length and the color. Let's call it previous color or let's call it just uh, color, I think. And now what we can do is check if the node has, the result has not been set yet. That means this is the shortest path length. And so we just set it. And now we visit the neighbors. So let's call them neighbor and neighbor color in the graph of the node. But remember, it's alternating. That means that neighbor color, we visit we visit it only if, so we visit ne, the neighbor node, only if the neighbor color is different than color, right? Because we want the colors to be alternating. If the, the to get to the previous node, to get to node, we used red, we want to use only blue to get to this neighbor. If for to arrive at this node, we used blue. We want to only use red to go to the neighbor so that we can maintain the alternate colors. So that's exactly what we are going to do here. We are going to say that they need to be different, right? So the neighbor color needs to be different than the color of the node. And we also want to not visit the same node that has coming from the same color twice, right? So. To do that, again, we are going to check that the neighbor and its color are not invisited. But if the color is different, this will be true and we will be able to visit this node. And that's exactly what we want. So for our queue, we want to add the neighbor and its neighbor color. And we want to, of course, add the steps, which are just steps plus one, right? Or sorry, length plus one, because we just visited another edge. So the length increased by one. Okay, so that's for our queue. Now we also want to populate our visited set and the node is neighbor and its color is neighbor color, right? And this should be it. Now we just want to run this. Uh, looks like it's missing here, but this is just normal BFS. The only dif difference is this here to maintain alternate colors. Um, and this here, instead of checking one single node, we want to populate it for every node. So if I run this, it should work. And that passes test cases, okay? Um, yeah, so that's pretty much it for this problem. It's um, it, it's more it's simpler on the simpler side. Uh, please like and subscribe and see you on the next one. Bye.